I'm going to take you through how you systematically are going to perform a foot focused gait assessment. This is where we want to remember the five subphases of gait. And we're going to be doing this gait assessment looking at three different perspectives, the posterior, the anterior, and the lateral. Remember your subphases of gait and try to be very systematic about this. You're gonna start with the right foot, the right foot, initial contact. Are they striking the outside of the heel on the lateral side of the foot? Great job once they do it on the right side, then you look at the left side. And then you go into the next phase of gait. Again, loading response you don't really see, so then you're looking at mid stands. Are they neutral in mid stands? What is their abduction when they're in mid stands? Are they really turned out like a duck or do they have a mild degree or is their foot neutral? And then you go into late mid stands. Late mid stands, how are they going through their ankle joint? Are they compensating in any of the ways that we understand? And then finally, how is their push off position? So you're doing that again, systematically posterior. And then you're going systematically anteriorly and then systematically from a lateral perspective. Now the video that I'm gonna show you just an example to walk us through it, I'm going to be looking at it from an anterior and posterior. I do not have a lateral perspective, so you would want to just appreciate that as well. And then I do my gait assessments that I'm showing you through this course barefoot just down a hallway. You can do it on the treadmill, you could do it barefoot, you could be doing it in shoes. I always recommend doing barefoot though first and then you can put the shoes on after to see if anything changes or comes out a little bit more from an obvious perspective. You can watch them with and without their orthotics, absolutely your choice. And you could use any of the high-tech apps as well. I just like to use the camera on my phone and then I go slow motion to toggle through that. So I'm just going to start by showing you um, this gentleman walking and you just want to take it in. Again, we remember we want to be very systematic on it. Try not to look at the whole body, the way that the arms are moving, what's his shoulder height, you know, what's his stride length. There, there's a lot that could be thrown at you. So be very, very systematic on it. So I would want to take over the control of the, the camera. And starting with just his right foot, he's swinging forward and I'm looking at his initial contact. Ooh, it's a little blurry until we could get the camera in order. Let me go to his next cycle. Okay, so there's him striking the ground. There him on the right side, so I can see he is contacting the lateral side of the right heel initially, so that is great. I'm then looking at the left leg to see his initial contact, and then again, same thing there, initial contact. You can see he's boom, right about, and then he is on the lateral side of his heel first. I'm then going into the next phase of gait, load and response we do not see, so we wanna capture this gentleman during his mid stance. So as he's in mid stance, right there he's in mid stance. How does he look? He's a little bit of an unlocked everted. You see the curvature on the outside of the heel there. And then let's look at his mid stance on his left leg. Same thing. He's got a little bit of a curvature there showing some unlocked in that rear foot. As we go forward to late mid stance, let's get him back over here. You want to look at to see, does he have any spinning of his heel? Is he lifting his heel early? Is he abducted? Does he have a pronatory snap? Okay, so we're starting to take that in. Now, let's also look then from an anterior perspective. So as he goes anterior, he's walking back to the camera. And we're looking again, what's his heel contact? Great, that looks good on the right side his left side, could do a little better on that left side, right there, actually he's lateral. You see the lateral side there? So that position is actually good, okay? And then let's look at him going from the front or the anterior perspective, what his mid stance looks like. There's his left leg going through mid sands. Do you see how that's a little bit unlocked here? Unlocked as he's there. And then we go to that right side. 
same thing. Do you see unlocked, right? So that pronation, we want to take that in and appreciate that, okay? From his late mid stance, it's a little bit hard again to see late mid stance on slow motion because it's a, it's a dynamic compensation, but it gives you a little bit of a perspective to see if they're twisting the heels. As I go back, I'm looking now at propulsion. So how does he pick up his foot? How does he pick up his foot as he is about to take a step? I'm looking at that right foot. Let's go back to his left one. Okay, he looks oblique off of that left one. Looking at his right one right there. Do you see that? Okay, that looks like a good lever. I would want to assess this in a closed chain perspective to see how much inversion he has. And then let's look at that right leg one more time. Do you see how he's he's in an oblique angle? So he's actually not pushing through his full first MPJ. Can you guys appreciate that? Okay, so what I'm gonna do is now I'm gonna just play it again so you can take take it all in and see from a dynamic perspective if things happen to jump out a little bit more for you. Okay, he also has tibial femoral external rotation. You can see that on both sides. Right, so now if you're, if you're new to doing a gait assessment, let's play that one more time. If you're new to doing a gait assessment and you're just watching someone walk like this and you're not slowing the camera down, it is very difficult. So absolutely do not hesitate to just record someone walking a couple times and then say, okay, great. And then say, give me a few minutes. And then you sit at your desk or somewhere and go slow motion looking through the camera. That is how you want to be performing a optimal gait assessment. You can freeze frame it, screenshot, show it to the client or the patient, really capture each phase of gait of what's happening with the foot so you can get that bigger understanding of how this impacts their larger movement, their larger compensation, um, injury patterns, performance, everything that we are utilizing a gait assessment for. And again, we do it systematically. We do it in a very organized way. There's some flow charts in the Dropbox folder for BTS level two. Absolutely follow those and use that as a guide to then create effective programming for all of your clients.